please welcome to the stage, BJ View. Hello, everyone. I've been sitting over here pretty nervous the last 30 minutes listening to you guys, mainly because I wasn't sure what my walk-up song was going to be. <laughs> they didn't ask me what I, what, I, what I preferred. Larry got this kind of rock and roll, the lights going, Beatles song. Fits his personality. Chris gets the rock and roll, the matches skull socks. And I don't know what mine was. I just, I was thinking maybe Justin Bieber, and then, so regardless of that, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. It's awesome that Teva puts us on for you guys to interact with each other. It's a great way for everybody to get together, see what everyone's doing. And most importantly, it's great because I got a bunch of free stuff. <laughs> I got a free brain from small molecular discovery. Thank you. Biologics CMC notebook and another notebook from Teva Oncology. So thank you guys for that. I'll come back anytime for the free stuff. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you guys today about my story. I'm here to make you laugh, I'm here to make you cry, and I'm here to let you know how you've impacted my life without even knowing it. Now, it all goes back to when Ann said it started when I was nine years old. My parents came home one night and they were crying. I don't remember the exact specifics of the details, but they sat my sister and I down on the couch and they said that they had just come back from the doctor's office. At the doctor's office, they said that they had just learned that my mom received positive results for Huntington's disease. Now, similar to how many of you guys are thinking, a nine-year-old, I didn't really know much about what Huntington's was, but I soon learned that it was a progressive neurological disorder that slowly takes away one's ability to do absolutely everything in life. There are three main symptoms. Number one is chorea, which you're hearing a lot about now. There are these involuntary dance-like movements. There are true pain in the ass to the person with HD and also the family that takes away their ability to do little things that we all take for granted on a daily basis. Number two, there are cog cognitive problems like short-term memory loss, decision-making and concentration. And third, there are behavioral symptoms like depression, anxiety, and sometimes suicidal thoughts and suicide. HD isn't very cookie cutter, but typically it starts to affect people around the age of 40 and lasts for about 15 years until death. What some consider the worst trait about Huntington's disease, though, is it's hereditary. So every child of an affected parent has a 50-50 chance of one day inheriting that same disease. So back to the story, my parents are crying, my sister and I are now crying, but the basic message that my parents leave us with is, yes, mom will one day get sick, everything is okay today, please ask any questions if you have any, and we love you very much. So a couple months go by, and my mom decides that she's not gonna run away from this disease, but instead she's going to run towards it. And she starts doing that by getting actively involved in the local nonprofit doing advocacy work for the Huntington's Disease Society of America. While doing that, she encourages my dad, my sister, and I to go and participate at this local fundraiser called the Hoopathon. Now, my dad, sister, and I were pretty new to this disease. It's, it's kind of scary to us. And then to throw us to the event where it's called the Hoopathon, where we originally thought hula hoops, which some of you guys might be thinking. Once we did learn it was basketball, it, it helped us feel a little bit more comfortable. So one Saturday morning, my dad, my sister, and I, we got in a car and we drove to Minneapolis, where we're from, and we showed up to this elementary school where these people were shooting hoops, and it was actually an awesome time. Ended up shooting hoops, making the most baskets, raising the most money, won a couple prizes. And if you want to talk about the positive first impression that something can have on a young person, this hoopathon was that positive first impression for myself. It was so positive that on the way home in the car, from the back seat, I asked my dad, hey dad, can we have our own hoopathon next year? Silence. As you can imagine, put yourself in my dad's shoes. He's 35 years old. His wife just got diagnosed with this terrible disease. He'll one day lose her, have to become a full-time caregiver. He has two young kids at risk, and now his kid wants to hold their own event. 
holding your own event requires telling the whole world, telling your friends, telling the community, and it's such a personal and new thing. So instead of thinking of all those negative things, instead my dad said, let's do it. And that was a 50-50 chance in my life that really could have gone either way and turned out to be one of the most impactful decisions on my life that someone else has made. So it's a year later, and we're holding our own family hoopathon now. We knew nothing about what we were doing, but we stuck to the basics. In 1995, we picked a date, we whipped up a flyer, we booked an elementary school gym, we told all of our friends and family, we said our prayers at night asking that people would show up. The basic premise of a hoopathon is you put five minutes on a clock, you try to make as many free throws as you can, you bring in donations from family and friends, it's a carnival-like event to help people have a great experience. And that day came, our prayers were answered, people showed up. It was one of the coolest feelings in the world, I can remember it to this day, and it was a blast. It was a blur of a day, but we had 50 people in the gym and we ended up raising $2,000. It was pretty cool, it was fun, and we had so much fun that before the day was even over, we had already planned next year's event. We stuck to a very sophisticated business model and, and that was let's do everything, let's do everything again that worked, let's add one new thing, let's invite everybody to come back and encourage them to bring one new friend. So year two, people showed up, they brought a friend. What was 50 people turned into 75 people, what was $2,000 raised turned into $3,000 raised and it kept snowballing from there. 100 people, 200 people, 250 people, 500 people, 750 people a year, from 2,000 to 5,000 to 15,000 to 25,000 to 50,000 to 60,000 dollars a year. In a 15 year period that we held this event, we knew nothing about what we were doing. With the help of many volunteers and some matching funds, we helped raise over $1 million towards education and research for Huntington's disease. Now, now, raising money is great, but two cool things came out of the Hoopathon that we never really expected. And number one was we started to connect families in Minnesota that had HD that didn't know each other. So they would come to the Hoopathon, they'd connect with each other, and they'd leave with a new support network they didn't have. And the second thing was people and families started to say, you know what, this View family can do this Hoopathon, and they don't really know what they're doing. Why can't we be the change as well and hold our own event? So from the inspiration of just seeing what my family was doing, Hoopathons and other events in Minnesota and around the country started to spurt up because they said, you know what, we can do that too. We need to fight back as well. So over this 15 year time frame, as you can imagine, the Hoopathon was going awesome, but Huntington's disease was slowly taking over my mom's life. I best describe the progression of Huntington's disease with my mom's love for exercise. Before she was diagnosed, she was a marathon runner. She ran a few full marathons, a few half marathons, a few years after that, she would run five or six miles a day, obviously still impressive. A couple years later, it was down to a mile. A couple years later that, it was walking a mile. A couple years after that, it was walking around the block. I was walking around the house with a cane, and it was getting out of a wheelchair until she could not even do that. Emotionally, it was even more of a roller coaster. My mom became depressed. She had extreme anxiety. She wouldn't leave the house. She would yell at the neighbors for absolutely no reason. She lost all of her friends. She couldn't keep a job. She got into multiple car accidents. She even had a couple suicide attempts that won her a few nights in the psych ward. On top of that, the fights with my family were the worst. She would take out her aggression and her frustration on HD against my dad and my sister. Now, I can't tell you the amount of times that I would have to run out to the driveway when my sister was coming home from school or swim practice and just say, Emily, you need to go somewhere else for a couple hours because if you come inside, you're going to be verbally abused by Huntington's disease. The nights when my dad was traveling for work, my sister and I would have to arm wrestle and flip a coin to decide who would get to go hang out with friends and who would stay home with mom to make sure she was okay. A decision that's not easy for a couple teenagers one that we got used to and really one that many teenagers and HD families all get used to at some point. At nights it was the worst. We'd be having a perfectly normal family dinner. Something would trigger Huntington's disease 
and the night would be absolutely ruined and it would never make any sense. I can't tell you the amount of nights I lay awake in my bed, hoping, praying that nothing would happen as I had to listen to Huntington's disease verbally and sometimes physically continue throughout the night, attack my dad. In the morning, she wouldn't remember what happened. She'd be apologetic, she'd be sorry, but 12 hours later, it would likely happen again. Now, I don't truly understand the strength that my dad had to be the rock of our family, to not fight back, to not run away, to keep his kids sane and stable and living a normal life, but I'm truly grateful for everything that my dad did during that time, and he'll never truly understand the respect that I have for him for being there throughout that period. When my sister and I moved off to college, we unfortunately, we had to move my mom into a group home to get the proper care. Never easy to put a parent who is unwilling and doesn't want to into a group home, but she needed to receive the proper care. It was a great place. It was a couple miles down from our house. It was actually a home filled with people who had Huntington's disease. And I would always, we could, we could never tell her we were coming. And, and I, just thinking back to this, it brings a smile on my face. So I would show up and she would get so excited to see us because it was just a, a warm welcome. But I'd, I'd turn the corner and the smile that she'd get on her face was so big and she'd be sitting in her wheelchair and she couldn't walk, but for some way, shape, or form, when we'd come around the corner, God would give her the strength, and she'd get out of this wheelchair, and we'd call them rock star jumps. And everyone would be scared, because she could fall and hit her head, which she did a few times. But she would get out, and she would jump out of the chair and land. And it was one of the most awesome things to see the excitement on her face. And I would, I would truly give anything to be able to see that, that smile and that rock star jump again. In 2011, uh, my mom did pass away from complications with pneumonia, which is a pretty common way that people pass away with HD. Incredibly hard as a, a young person to lose their parent. I'm sure many of you guys can attest to that, but always nice to know that she's no longer fighting and no longer struggling and she's in a better place. About a year before my mom did pass away, I was asked by her neurologist, Dr. Martha Nance, to come and speak at a conference in Vancouver that was full of scientists and researchers about Huntington's disease and speak about living at risk and being positive and being okay about it. Now, I was a, a recent college graduate thriving in the, in the, the real world, living in my dad's basement. <laughs> I was selling phone lines as my first job, cold calling, making just enough money to uh, you know, support my binge drinking on the weekends, I would call it. So I figured, you know, why not? I'll take this free trip, I'll go and talk. And the talk went fine. It was in a group similar to this, and it went well, but what, what I got out of the talk was more than I ever could have imagined. My eyes were opened up to a whole world of these families with HD, and it wasn't just me and my family in Minnesota. It was around the country, and it was around the world, where people were going through the same things that I was going through, but they needed more support. They needed more education, and they needed more resources. So two things came out of that conference that I never would have imagined. There was no intent to go to that conference and find these, but two things. Number one is I met a company called Lundbeck Pharmaceuticals. Now, some of you guys might know Lundbeck. About eight years ago, they launched Xenazine, the first treatment for Korea associated with HD. And they asked me to come on into their team. I worked in their marketing department for a year. And I worked in their sales department, uh, selling an array of their neurology products and it was a true blessing for myself to combine my passion for business and my passion for helping families with neurological disorders. The second thing that came out of the conference, and the thing I'm really excited to talk to you guys about, is I met this other young guy named Matt Ellison. Now, Matt has a similar story to mine. His father was diagnosed with HD. He lives in, lives in the United Kingdom. So Matt and I connected, and we started emailing and Facebook messaging back and forth saying, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? How do we combine our efforts to help more families who are impacted by HD? So after about three or four months of throwing around some pretty dumb ideas, Matt one day emailed me and he said, BJ, it's always been my dream to start an organization to specifically support young people impacted by Huntington's disease around the world. Will you help me? I must have honed a little bit of my dad, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree sometimes, because I didn't know how to start a nonprofit. 
I didn't know anything about creating a website. I didn't know anything about what he wanted to do. But I said, heck yeah, Matt, I'm in. Let's do this. So we're off and running, literally. We're raising money. That summer, Matt ran 12 marathons. I joined him for one of them. <laughs> Barely made it. <laughs> but either way, we already had the donations from our family and friends. We started writing content for our website. We started connecting with organizations and professionals. And we started to create some buzz for this organization that was going to be the first positive impression for these young people around the world who were impacted by HD, similar to how that Hoopathon was the positive first impression for me. We wanted this website to be the positive first impression for them. So from just an idea six years ago, I want to share with you guys where we're at today. So in 2012, we officially launched the Huntington's Disease Youth Organization, or HDYO, as the young kids call it. HDO.org launched in 2012 as the go-to platform for young people to learn about HD. So when young kids learn about Huntington's disease, what are they doing? Google Huntington's disease, what comes up? Bad stuff on Wikipedia. We want this site to be their go-to place. It's, it's friendly. It's written by young people for young people. We have sections for kids, teens, young adults, parents, juvenile Huntington's, friends, and professionals. In 2013, we found funding to hire Matt as a full-time employee, our first, a project coordinator. 2014, we hired our second employee, who's a youth worker, which is like similar to a social worker, but she specifically works with young people. She works out of the Huntington's Clinic in Georgetown University. In 2013 through 2016, we held six youth camps. Now, a youth camp are a place where we bring young kids together, probably 50 in each region, and they come for a four-day retreat, like a YMCA camp or a church camp, for education, for support, for motivation, and to connect with other young kids to show them that they're not alone. These camps are awesome. Just two months ago, we hired our, uh, our third employee, who's an executive director, to kind of continue to ramp up what HDO is doing. And also, another cool thing about the website is it's translatable into 10 different languages. So we're very blessed here in the US to have healthcare knowledge on, on the web very easily uh, and accessible. But in other countries, it's not. So with one click of a button, people can view all of our content in 10 different languages, Swedish, Polish, uh, Spanish, Italian, French, you name it, it's up there. And uh, that's part of the way I'm going to tell you that Teva is helping support us today. So some few stats about HGO to show our growth as well. We get about 100,000 page views on our website per month. We have over uh, 10,000 Facebook followers. So if you're on Facebook, this is your chance to pull out your phone and follow us. We've created over 50 YouTube videos that have over 500,000 views online. Our articles have been shared over 60,000 times online. And a cool fact is that we're getting a 60% year-over-year increase in young people from around the world reaching out to us directly asking questions about how they can get proper education and proper support, and I don't know where they would go if they didn't find us. And this is the cool part. So May is actually Huntington's Disease Awareness Month. And on Instagram, we're having a little challenge where we're asking people to share what gives them hope for HD. So this is where I need your help today. Is that OK? That wasn't very enthusiastic. But <laughs> you're going to help me, because I'm on stage and I have time left. Um, <laughs> OK, so I have to film my video. So what I'm going to do, and this is where I need your help, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say two seconds of what gives me hope for HD. And then I need you guys to get out of your seats, and we're going to do a, an HD yo chant, OK? So I want this side of the room to do H, you guys in the middle to do D, and you guys over here are my yoers, all right? So you're going to do yo. So we'll go, we'll practice. Ready? One, two, three. H-D-Yo, H-D-Yo. You guys are good. <laughs> Really didn't know how this was going to go when I thought of doing this. <laughs> so we're only doing one take. So I can't screw up, and you guys can't screw up. And if you get out of your seats, it's better. So let's get some action going, all right? All right, we'll be quick. And we'll do it like four times. So we'll kind of speed it up, and then at the end, go crazy, all right? <laughs> all right, hey, everybody. It's BJ View, the chairman of the Huntington's Disease Youth Organization, and for May, uh, HD Awareness Month, what gives me hope is all these people behind me who work at Teva Pharmaceuticals who are doing everything they possibly can to bring support, to bring treatments to the Huntington's disease community and many others around the world. So here they are right now.
All right, thanks. That's going to be awesome. So find us on Instagram, HDO feed. If you, do you guys know what Instagram is? You're laughing, but I guarantee 75% of you don't. Uh, that's that's going to be awesome. <laughs> My social media guy has been asking me for a video for the last two weeks, and I was like, just, I got a cool one, I got a cool one, so hope that works. I would love to run HDO for the rest of my life, but it's obviously my goal. I'd much rather shut the doors down today because our goal is to find treatments that stop the progression of HD. But what HDO is doing is truly making an impact because what we have learned is if you support and if you educate young people properly throughout their, their age, their, their growth, they will be much more motivated to give back when they're older. Now giving back could be raising awareness, giving back could be raising funds, or more importantly, giving back could be the more, the more interest in participating in research trials to help speed up treatments for this disease. Now we met your team at Teva just three years ago, and you guys could not have been more excited to be a part of the change with us at HDO. These camps I was talking about, these six camps Teva has fully funded these six camps. And I'm talking, if we didn't have you guys, these camps wouldn't exist. Now, these, these camps are crazy cool. And, and we have some, I have a video I'll show you here of the campers. But the support, the education that these young people receive at this camp, it blows, it blows me away. And really, we wouldn't be able to do that without you. And another cool thing I'd just like to say about the positive first impression we're giving young people with your help is about 10% of our campers, they, they don't pay a dime to come to camp. They've never been on an airplane before. So for something so negative in their life, giving them the opportunity to fly on an airplane, that's such a small little thing. But what a positive first impression that that young person has. And I don't know what that change is going to be like for them in one, five, 10 years. But I know that what you, got, what you have all done has helped us put some positivity in that person's life. Now, we actually had one of your colleagues, Chris Gums, who is on the Aceto marketing team in the Kansas City office, actually come out to camp the past two years. And Chris's interaction with the young people symbolized so much more than a company that's trying to sell drugs. Chris's interaction symbolized the company that truly wants to be that change and actually is that change today. I'm going to read you real quick an email that came through just a couple weeks ago out of nowhere from a camper because I want you guys to truly understand the impact you're having on these young people's lives. So it says, hi Chandler, who's our youth worker in DC. I just wanted to get in touch with you since it's approaching a year since meeting you at HD Youth Camp. I wanted to let you know how great of an impact attending camp had on me. Although it was out of my comfort zone, it opened so many doors for me. I'm confident in talking about HD, more educated, more passionate, and more hopeful because of the support from camp. I'm unexplainably grateful for you, Maddie, and all of the staff at camp. After reflecting on the experience, I can say that the love and acceptance at camp was exactly what I needed and something that I will never forget. Unfortunately, I didn't apply to camp this year because I will be moving to college the day the camp ends. I'm so sad I won't be able to experience it again this summer. I did apply for the NYA scholarship for HDSA convention though. I think that after breaking the ice at camp, I would be able to get a lot out of attending convention. Thank you again for all that you do. Your impact is greater than you know. That's pretty cool. That's real world. That's what you all at Teva have helped make happen. And in a little appreciation for myself, our staff, our campers, we shot a little video at last year's camp to say thank you to you guys. So let's roll, let's roll the video. On behalf of HDO, we would like to take, thank Teva for their generous donation. Without you guys, this whole camp wouldn't be possible. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Teva. We've had a great time. And please, have a look at these guys. <laughs> So awesome.
This next slide up here I added from the talk that I did in Orlando for the sales group because I wanted to truly show that HD is a family disease. So this is a family tree, it's actually my family with Huntington's in it, starting with my great grandmother. So she passed HD on to my grandpa, to her two other of three siblings. And as you can see, if you can't see in the back, everything in red is people who have HD and everything is blue that is people who don't. And this doesn't include the next generation that's likely being born right now. But as you can see, it's tough. My grandpa, he committed suicide in 1990 on his second attempt. He burned the house down, <coughs> passed it on to my mom. And when I was 23 years old, I decided that I wanted to go into a doctor's office and give blood to see if I would one day get the symptoms of Huntington's disease. Such a personal and private decision, it's, it's hard to explain to a lot of people, but I went in a little uniquely, because I went in, I didn't tell my family, I didn't tell my friends because I wanted to know, but I knew they weren't ready for my results, if that makes sense. I walked back into the clinic two, two weeks later, longest two weeks of my life. I was sat in the chair and I was read the results that I would not develop Huntington's. Truly a, uh, thank you. <laughs> Truly a blessing. Uh, my life flashed before my eyes. Things that I never had planned for in my life I now thought were possible. Having a family, going to grad school, having children, buying a home maybe retirement. I'm also incredibly blessed to share with you that just three years ago, my sister also received results that she would not develop Huntington's. <laughs> we are truly blessed, and it was funny, I was just talking to my sister last week, she just had her second child on Monday. She was talking about how different her life is today and how great her life is, but how different it would be if the coin ended up on the other side. So we know we're incredibly blessed, and regardless of my test results, and regardless of my sister's results, I'm in this fight till the end. If nothing is done to find a treatment, to find a cure, some of my best friends will one day show symptoms, and I just don't think that's okay. So what I'm asking you all today is to join me in the fight to support the tens of thousands of families with Huntington's disease around the world with the daily jobs that you guys are doing, or more importantly, find another cause. Find another cause that's close and personal to you and to do everything you can to fight back and be that change. Now, after the talk in Orlando, some people said, well, what do I do? So here are three simple ways that you guys can help HDO. Number one is go on our website, tell a friend. Post our site on, in, uh, on, on your Facebook or Instagram, if you have that, as I said, and just say, hey, this guy came in and talked today, here's his website. You never know what friend of a friend has Huntington's disease and needs the resources, because I can stand up here and say the great things about HDO, but there's still so many thousands of people who don't know what we do, but need our services. So you guys can help me there. Number two, you can click to donate. We're a 501c3. We will you know, we'll spend your pennies more than you ever could imagine, but that's, that's not really why I'm here. Number th three is shop at Amazon. Uh, you guys probably already shop at Amazon. They have a program. If you go to amazon.smile.com, you can type in HDO, and a small portion of all your uh, money you spend there, which is probably a lot, will be donated back. <laughs> Amazon, geez Louise. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for you guys. So here is my email, here's my phone number. You guys have helped me in my life more than you ever could have imagined, and if I can ever do anything to help you all, I'm, I'm here to do that, so please reach out. And I had one main message that I wanted to convey to you guys today, and that's regardless of some of the negativity that you're hearing, you see the slides that Larry put up, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what department you're in, whether in sales, marketing, regulatory, HR, building maintenance, I don't care, it does not matter. What matters to me and what matters, what should matter to you, is you all are changing the lives of thousands of young people impacted by HD through HDO, and you're changing the lives of tens of thousands of people in HD families and your other disease states. Now, I believe it's truly everyone's mission to leave this place a better place than, than when we got here, and the work you guys are doing on a day-to-day -day basis is absolutely doing that, and I hope you all know that. So my one request for you guys is when you show up to work every day, remember what you're doing this for. 
Remember the lives that you're changing in Huntington's disease and your other disease states. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Come find me, please, out there and say hello.